I've always made things, ne never stopped. There's never a day goes by that I don't make something. The, the first thing that I ever made, I made a coffee table with all turned legs and turned top. The only thing was that I made the lathe first to make the table at the age of 10. My name is David Hulse. In my working life, I was the Chief Development Engineer for Royal Dalton. My day was spent designing automatic machines used for the pottery process. For the past 45 years, I've been constructing in miniature eight of the most important engines which were made during the 18th century. I've got a gift for designing machines. I've never done anything else. I've got this creative urge and I discovered uh, that no engines which were made during the 18th century had ever been made in great detail by anyone. That is the task that I actually did set myself and I've done it. I started to make these models in 1970. Many people ask me, how ever can you spend so much time making these items? My answer to that is, how long have you spent watching the television? And look what I've got. to discover how these engines worked. The research has taken a considerable amount of time, almost in, a, in one or two cases, as long as it has taken to make the models. When the, these models are made, that is how they were. And I know it is correct. You've got to get yourself into a very, very peaceful frame of mind to make these items so small. And uh, because they've all got to function, and they, they all do function exactly how they would have done, 16 times bigger than I'm making them. Every item on every engine is individually handmade. Every nut, pin and washer on every engine is handmade. The, the workshop that I've uh, created to make these models is uh, specifically done for the models themselves. The, the lathe that I use is 116 years old. It is ideally suited for making pins as small as 40 thousandths of an inch diameter, right up into the, the larger ones, which are five millimeters in diameter. Every one of the thousands of bricks that I've made have been made on a machine that I designed for the purpose. So far, the eight models have consumed 151,000 bricks. Originally these engines would have been made from English oak, 
but the one thing that you can't do when you're making models of this scale is use an English oak because the thing is to, to make them realistic you've got to scale the grain as well so all the, the wood used on the models is Japanese oak which is much much slower growing and, and much closer grained and it almost looking at the wood as I've scaled the grain as well. The, the, the engines that I've got, that I've made, there is no original plans done. I've done them all. I was on my own. No one else was doing this. No one else was brick lane <laughs> at a 16th full size, especially bricks they made themselves. These models are absolutely unique. It's not often the word unique can be used with such confidence. It's not often in life that you can find something that you want to make that hasn't been done before. I'd got the necessary knowledge and skills to make these and, you, and I found great enjoyment to come home at night when I got home from work and construct these engines, transporting my mind back into the 18th century using the knowledge that I knew they would have had. It gives you an appreciation just how skilled some of the men were to have created these items because they are mechanical wonders. All these engines are the ones that change the world and the way we, we live in the world today. Every mechanical device we take so much for granted owes its existence to these engines. They're, they're such important engines, I was so uh, anxious that they should be correct because when uh, they, when I'm not around, people will be able to see these engines and be assured that is exactly how it was. Hopefully they'll have a, an understanding the, the research that's gone into them, the skill to make them, and also appreciate the, the great skill and knowledge that's gone into the construction of the engines during the 18th century, and give the inventors the, the credit they so richly deserve.